Hello, it's Dirty Trucking, Dirty Trucking. I want to talk about who ruined the trucking industry. What has ruined the trucking industry? Was it the drivers? No. Because we just drive the freight from A to B. Management. And those chosen, chosen for management has ruined the trucking industry. That's who ruined it. Who you chose as management to oversee the daily, day-to-day -day operations of your fleet company. Now, this is not true for all companies. But the majority of trucking companies that have a high turnover rate, you can't get drivers. And the drivers that you do get leave immediately or stay short term and leave with negative comments. Or either you are a company that is so bad off that you can only get new drivers, inexperienced drivers. Barely got any experience because you can train them and make them do whatever you want to do to make it look like you are doing a good job as management. But an experienced driver such as myself who knows the rules of trucking, who knows what should not be going on in trucking or your equipment or we have to deal with in trucking, you cannot get away with that shit. So, who's to blame? Who ruined trucking? In my eye, management. Management is to blame. If you are not in touch, if you have lost touch, if you have not went to your fleet, your business, looked around, talk with the drivers. I don't mean talk with the drivers that's, I don't want to say this, but this is what you is. Kiss ass. You are not going to get The truth about what's going on at your company. And another reason you don't get the truth is because those drivers, if they tell you the truth, they in fear of losing their job. But I'm not one of those drivers. I would tell you in a minute what's wrong. And I will be out of there in a hot flash if it continues to go on. But in my eyes, it's management. Someone that is allowing stuff that goes on, uh, like my previous video, conspiring to get rid of you. Why would management allow workers to run drivers off? You a worker. They ran me off in the other job. And the individual that ran me off can't even drive the motherfucking truck. So you lost the driver. Probably scrambling to find another driver. But when they get there, they're going to see your raggedy equipment and hey, you be good luck on finding a driver. You may find one to hang around, just get a couple of checks, then be out. But I guarantee you they're not going to be long term. I was planning to be long term. For a minute, it, it wasn't my dream career ending because I'm toward the tail end of my trucking. I've been in I've been in the commercial industry from bus driving to trucking for a nice little minute now. It's, it's time for me to wind down. But from company to company, I notice the same shit. If you don't come in with a kiss ass attitude, the workers dispatchers and management is going to put you through some shit and that is true 
It is management's job to make sure that the people they hire, if you are in the hiring process, you if just your aspect of the job, is doing a job. But when you hear that another worker is asking a particular worker to do their job that pertain to them doing their job, and they got to get into some argument, that's where management come in. What do we find out? Management knew this individual's been doing this. This is not the first time this individual's been doing this. And you keep having run-ins with the same individual. But management does nothing about it. So, it's either three things going to happen here. It's going to be an argument between the both. It's going to be some disrepair action. Because of the argument. And somebody going to leave. Either get fired or leave. Three outcomes of that. But what if they find out. What if the owner of the company finds out. Management. That you put in place to oversee this. To run the facility. Knew about all this. And you sat there. And tolerated this. And this is why trucking is ruined. All these places out here, there's manufacturing, retail, food, all these places that need trucks to ship they shit. Just waiting for a company. You know, let me tell you something. These people that ship this shit, and I've been out there. And I've been out there a nice little minute. And I, I, I uh, hey, they recognize me when I come back. Some of them that I've been to on a regular basis. You know, and I, I, they had them talk to me. They don't like companies that don't keep the equipment up. I've been told that. I have been told that by shippers. They don't like putting their product in a company's ragged ass shit. They don't. That's another thing. That ruins the trucking industry. You won't invest in your own equipment. You will continue to ride your drivers around in equipment that's breaking down, costing you more money to get fixed than it would if you just keep your equipment up to date. Now, I'm not going to put it all off on the company. A lot of it comes from these, what you call these old... Uh, I call them, they not, they call them, it ain't those hot shots we see running around in Texas with those little cars on the back. I call these, these in and out drivers. They, they, they call themselves hot shot fast. They just want to get, they, they jump in and go. That's what they are. They jump in and go. Don't check shit. They just boom, 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 hook up, pull the fuck out, barely add a truck up, dragging the tires because the damn goddamn axles ain't aired up right. I done seen that at the goddamn yard. You want to leave out there so fucking fast, you ain't aired up the goddamn tires and the motherfuckers was smoking before he even got to the edge of the damn driveway because you was that ready to go. We heavy haul. I've seen that. And that's out there over the road. A trucker. I call that, that's, 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 the inconsiderate. That's the word. Inconsiderate. Of a truck over the road that does that. You, you take a trailer. It's loaded. Maybe you got to drop it for whatever reason. Or you dropped it. It got unloaded. And you, another trucker from your company come in. And got unloaded. You know, had to drop it. Need to empty out of there. You. As the driver who pulled that ragged ass shit in there. Didn't write it up. I've had that happen to me. Brought a load in to a customer. Had it, it was just a dropping hook. Went to go get an empty. Something wrong with the empty. Because the driver... Didn't write up tires, blowed, something. Or either because of damage from the damn unloading process. How many fork trailers you done got with it and poked the goddamn hole in the side? Or your trailer that you had. You now poked the hole in the fucking side. Now you got to go call dispatch. They got to route you somewhere to drop it and get you another damn trailer. Route you somewhere to fix it. Then route you somewhere to go get another trailer. A lot of things is involved with ruining trucking. Drivers not doing their part. Management neglect of their part. But the companies I've been with, uh, I want to say 75, 78% 
is management. The way you run things. One way you run your day, who you put in charge. You know, truckers talk over the road about them dispatchers. A lot of you was just, just out of college and have no idea about trucking. Dispatchers is out of college. You, you don't know nothing about trucking, but they train you to dispatches, loads, and everything. That's why they so they don't have any emotion when it comes to drivers breaking down, got to get home, or something unforeseen happening out there, and we sitting around. They 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 are emotionless to it because they're not a trucker. They don't really know what you're going through. They don't. Then they don't care. And then if you get pissed off at them or, or you make them upset, they're going to get that message. Well, you can just sit there then. You know how I many dispatchers on here tell me? You can just sit there then. What kind of fucking dispatcher are you? And why the hell are you still there? Your job is to keep my truck moving. I only sit when I want to sit because I was an independent contractor out there for a long time. I'm no company driver. I, I can't do that company shit. And see, that company shit is like local. And it's... it's you have the time I've been in trucking and the, and the problems I've been having because I'm a female, because of my attitude I have toward work. And dealing with their attitudes toward how they think work is supposed to really be. And it's not. We're clashing. I have the right work ethics. But you try to make it look like I'm the wrong person to be running shit by causing little problems to make it look like I'm irate. I'm always arguing all the time. I'm not management. I'm a trucker. I'm not management. If I end up blowing up, I blew up. That's what's going to happen. Because it takes a breaking point for me to blow up on you or... If it's just some extreme nonsense that I'm just not going to deal with. I'm, I'm just not. I'm not. But management is about 75, 78% to blame for what's going on. The ruining of trucking industry. Uh, the rest of it you can associate to now because of the pandemic, high fuel costs, uh, other economic uh aspects of it but majority of the time is management because I see no reason if you're a good fleet company you hire the best drivers you're able to retain your best drivers that you shouldn't be a number one company out there Every, your drivers will be happy they will be saying good things about you uh, even if they have uh, some type of situation they would even be making comments that uh, we have a uh, work relationship with a management that I'm able to come in and express myself and they resolve the issue but that's not the case all the time in trucking and it's definitely not the case at the company I just left they want to make it seem like I'm the problem Okay, if you want to make it seem like that, well, then I'm, a, I'm the problem then. You know why I'm the problem? Because I'm what your company should be. The way I function, the way I think as a driver, is the way your company should be operating. But it's not because of who you got running it. Oh, you don't need a degree to run a trucking company. You don't, from what I've seen. You don't. It'd be nice, but you don't. You need the experience. You need to know what truckers go to as a trucker. And you can build a company. Well, it's a lot of people built a company. A lot of these companies were built off of truckers. But the management they hire are not truckers. Haven't been trucker. So what? You ran a business somewhere else. <laughs> Why you ain't at that business? You hired in over here. What happened over there? You need to take all this in the, in, 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 in the aspect. When you talking about somebody running your business. You know, you know how many places I've been 
that I've seen them bring back people to the job they should have never brought back. People that when they get back, I hear rumors like they wasn't doing shit when they was here in the first place. And then you done gave them a title. You know how many times I done heard that shit? Or you bring back somebody, a driver uh, that was having some run-ins with. Or got to avoid because they was maybe saying some comments that they don't want to be dealing with on the job. You know, not every person that hires in on a job is looking for a relationship on a job, you know. But that's what we got to deal with the truckers. But who ruined the, the industry is management. All these, all over the world, <laughs> you got businesses need trucks to ship their shit all over the United damn states. And I was out there. Like U.S. Express. During the pandemic, what company, do you know of a company that would set a driver up to terminate them during the pandemic? A driver who was willing to stay out there, put themselves in danger and at risk at an unknown pandemic. At the time, that was just breaking. U.S. Express did that to me. Kid you not. And truthfully, I believe somebody thought my truck was stolen at U.S. Express. Now, that's the only company I've been with. I was with them before, a long time ago. Years, 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 years ago. And they always have shit come around with their trucks are stolen. Only company I was with. Yeah, U.S. Express. Trucks always coming up missing. Missing trailers, freight. You got a list of shit. Send across the dispatches if you see this. I was there the first time a truck guy came up missing. They gave me a truck. It was his bad condition. They uh, sent me over to Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Shippensburg, uh, the truck they wanted to give me, uh, they said they had a truck for me down there in Gulfport, Mississippi. That's how I got introduced to Gulfport, Mississippi, because of U.S. Express years ago. Not this recent incident, but years prior to that. Sent me down there to go recover a truck, and uh, we got down there. The truck wasn't there. Got stranded. They had to put me up in a hotel till they found out where the truck was, found out whoever took the truck, and snatched all the computer tracking shit off of it, and then... Uh, the company actually had it up there in Jacksonville, Jackson, Mississippi, somewhere, but didn't notify nobody. So, and then I had to drive up there. But when I got up there, the truck just wasn't sounding right. And um, I left that company. I, I didn't stay. And then I ended up going back. And what they do is lease purchase. They uh, set me up to get my truck taken. Sent me to that terminal. Told me I was uh, locked me in. Told me I had to go and uh, see somebody to speak to the office, the supervisor, somebody in the damn building, whoever his title was. Got me in the office. Got his boss on the phone. That's why I said this scenario that played out at my previous job is the exact same scenario that played out at U.S. Express. U.S. Express, exact same scenario. What they do that for, I don't know. At U.S. Express, you sent me there to get an empty trailer at that yard. Which I knew you didn't have any empty trailers because that was their total yard. And all the drivers coming in snatching them trailers up. And I asked them, Are you sure there's a trailer there? Uh, yeah, I got there. It was a trailer there, but it was damaged. You, their legs was damaged. The crank handle on the legs was damaged. I sent them a message. It was. True story. They pulled me off the load. Said, all right. And pull them, what you pulled me off the load for? You didn't want to send me here for an empty trailer. I told you not to send me here. But they pulled me out. Now, I ain't saying nothing to them out like that. I'm just thinking that out loud. What the hell? You put me on the load. You sent me here. I knew it wasn't no trailers in the first place. Because I just left here. Before my 34-hour reset started, I left here, went to the pilot up there in Memphis, Tennessee. I crossed the border. Went to the pilot. Got the No, the, the love's up there. The love's up there in Memphis, Tennessee. Got the truck washed. Left there because I knew I was going to do a 34 because they ain't had no trailers. Then headed over into the Flying J in West Memphis, Arkansas. Cause they all connect like that. And like, shit, three turns, you can cross out of Mississippi into Tennessee back into Arkansas. All right there. 
And that's when my dispatcher, the dispatcher sent me up with that load, made play games with me, bargaining with me, told me if I didn't take this load, they weren't going to give me the longer haul. You can't do that with me. I was an independent contractor. I relayed all this shit to my fleet manager, who's the dispatcher. They call them fleet managers there. I'm thinking he's going to handle the situation Monday. They ping me with a trailer and a load. I get down there. All they did, they used that to set me up. They used that to get me to the yard to take my truck. And I was pissed. The money I put into it. Now, at this point, you using me to get maintenance money, lease money. And then you took my truck for no reason. It is not your job to tell me I'm unhappy here. No. And see, let me tell you how the, the, this, they tell you to go over your dispatcher head, which I did. I got to my super, his supervisor. But his supervisor was taking talking the same crap as my fleet manager. And you know what he told me? He told me, you ain't got to be calling all over the terminal, getting somebody hired up. You stop right here at me. See, that's why nothing ever get resolved with truckers. You always got that one individual making everything stop at them. If you send a letter or a statement or anything, it never get to whoever it's supposed to get to because they done stopped it. And then the way they going to handle it, they're going to get rid of you because they don't want what you got to say to reach the important person. That's why trucking is ruined. You got to deal with this type of shit. And I'm tired of dealing with it. This last company has made a, what I dealt with made a mockery out of the commercial industry. And I'm tired. And right now I'm sitting up here. I'm like, do I even want to work? Show my talent at another trucking company. No, it ain't nothing but the same shit going to happen. Wasn't me to ruin the trucking industry. <laughs> it was management. Dirty trucking out.